know that that's the power pick that you want. We had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful performance from Kakao last game in our Hunter versus Bambi matchup. Will Shadow grab the Graves here? Will he pivot to something else? It's do or die. You can kind of see it on his it. face. He's been under so much scrutiny and so much pressure to perform. He's the yeah. big name that everyone is just really grabbing hold of if Mad Lions fall here. So much weight and responsibility on this, and he opts into the Graves. And Humanoid has to be sweating on this one because he knows he can pick the Syndra. He can probably set himself up for a strong early lane matchup, but it might not be enough. And now as he locks in the Ezreal for Karzi to once again set Karzi up for success this time around, something that we know that people have been waiting to see. No more Senna Wukong, no more Senna period here on the bottom side. It does, however, expose Humanoid to two more potential mid lane bans. We'll have to see how hard Supermassive want to go. I think they've done enough, but maybe they want to take it even further here. A five-man ban strategy now. Uh, you have a couple different options here. You can grab a power pick like a Shin. You can pick up your eight carry here if you would like. Flex pick would be interesting. The set obviously can can go into the mid lane um, as well as the top lane position. Strong matchup into Orn. Of course, set has uh, received some decent hits on his base damages. Scales, um, some of the base damage taken away, some of the scaling increase, so he needs to build a bit more AD to hit hard. Could do some decent work into the Orn matchup. Orn's W does make it difficult for set to find a solid ultimate. But as we've seen from this series so far, the matchup hasn't mattered too much as our mood seems to always have Arome's number. But the Syndra now banned away, and we might just see five bans leveled at Humanoid. It's surely a sign of respect, but if it means losing the game, it's not going to be one he's happy about. I mean, what's the final ban? Do you take away? Yep, I was going to say, do you take away the Zoe? He's got LeBlanc left, but he's going to have to reach real deep into the pit. And even then, you know, Supermassive are on red side. That's still a flex pick. We expect it to be a set top. You can still hide it. Yeah, one of the big issues as well is that if he does go for the LeBlanc into Kakao, anytime that mark is on him, anytime that passive is ticking away, it's really difficult for him to leap forward. Delayed CC normally seen as a weakness, normally seen as something that makes the CC less immediately impactful. But for Kakao, as long as that passive is up, ticking on a champion like the LeBlanc, he has the potential to lock him up. And it means that LeBlanc can never 100% fully commit for a combo without being punished. As now, the Scion's going to get locked in. and. Now I have questions? I have a lot of set questions. Mid? Oh, wow. B set mid. It has to be set mid. It is. But the thing is, is you could have picked your AD carry here and then given yourself the counter matchup. Either Balulu feels that he's pushed him far enough down that he knows what he's expecting, or this champion's just really pivotal to this composition. And the thing is, is now we have a huge source of carry potential coming in from the mid lane. Both the carries that you want to see enabled, Team and Karzi, are set up even if it's not their priority option. But to be honest, the uh, the Casio doesn't really get to mitigate a lot with the Miasma this game. And now the Isle Star coming in as well. So we've talked about throwing Hail Marys. We've talked about Mad Lions from behind in game willing to do so. And now it feels like they're throwing a Hail Mary here in draft to find the win. A lot of individual agency in this draft, but they have to execute flawlessly. Now, one of the things that uh, Supermassive were kind of missing on the composition was more hard engage. Obviously, you have the Leona ultimate, you have the Sleep set ult, but, you know, it's not like an Orn ultimate or something like that. I would have liked to have seen something like an Ash. Oh, no. We are going to witness one of two things. We are going to witness a game where Supermassive walk away and said, okay, we we're a little cocky, we we're a little confident, maybe we shouldn't have picked a vein there. Or we're going to watch a game where Supermassive wiped the floor with Mad Lions and cement the TCL as a world-class region. I mean, now we have it revealed why Balulu and uh, Armut had to take the, the bullet of revealing their champions first. Uh, Zeitnot was trying to get a full perspective on what was going to be the best AD carry to pick into the situation if he felt that he could get away with taking the Vayne. Now, uh, Vayne has been buffed up in re recent patches. I believe uh, some attack damage done to her ultimate. Um, we'll cover that as it goes into the game, especially if we see her in the final hour. But obviously, leaning against a Alistar and an Ezreal, even with the phase rush, Vayne should actually have a pretty good time as long as those Qs don't start chaining together and connecting onto her, especially because she'll itemize into uh, lifesteal anyway. So she'll be able to compete with the poke damage and walk herself into a very strong mid and late game. And again, good adaptation coming in from Supermassive in the draft, showing us a way to punish a lane with as with 
As limited lane pressure, let's say, as an Ezreal Alistair, Bane in the past has been considered a solid option into weaker early lanes, and now we have to see if it's going to be enough for Supermassive to find the win. Reminder, it is match point. Supermassive one game away from eliminating the fourth seed from the LEC from Worlds 2020. Mad Lions need to find a way to claw their way back to take us to game five and silver scrapes, or they will find themselves going home. Of course, the two players that we're going to be looking at on the side of the Mad Lines is going to be Humanoid and Karzi on these big power picks like the Cassiopeia as well as the Ezreal to carry this one through. Kind of the rock so far of Mad Lines where other individual performers have been up and down. On the other side, super massive. I mean, they looked so crisp and clean in the last game. Kakao putting on a masterclass with this Lilia isn't going to have the same priority in the mid lane that an Azir can grant him this time around. It is the set, so we'll see how that uh, changes his jungle pathing and if he's under any more pressure in this jungle in the matchup. And have to see, obviously, spending five bands on the Humanoid. See if it works out for Supermassive. The first three felt valid. We'll see if the second two actually secured in the matchup that they were looking for. Phase rush on Bolulu means if he ever really gets ahead in this matchup, it should be easy for him and Kakao to shut Humanoid down. But the sheer amount of damage potential that can come out from a Casio is always a bit intimidating. As we check in on bot side, you can see. Uh, press the attack as well as it appears to be Legend Alacrity. So no Legend Bloodline. Looks like it's confirming the fact uh, what you mentioned earlier, Proskurn, about early Blade of the Rune King as the priority here and not a crit item. And obviously the big thing of the Nimbus Cloak as well as the Gathering Storm uh, and the scaling potential there. Nimbus Cloak, I just think it's so powerful. <laughs> it makes yeah. it basically impossible to kill your ADC, especially for one as slippery as a vein after the initial engagement. As taking a peek onto the junglers there, um, Kakao went Raptor Camp and is now immediately invading, trying to make use of the priority that Balulu got early on to contest Raptor Camp. But Shadow, very heads up, didn't go buff to buff, instead went red into Raptors himself. So wasting a bit of Kakao's time, gets information on Kakao, sees that he doesn't have red, and is now sprinting across to contest red buff. So Shadow should actually be able to three buff Kakao in initial clear. That's going to be big. Early jungle momentum has been pretty important in this series, especially for Kakao, so slowing him down at all is going to feel pretty good. Keeping our eyes on where the first ganks are going to come through because while Ezreal Alistair certainly feels like solid picks for Kaiser and Karzi, they do not seem like the strong duo into the bot lane that they need as Zynon and Snowflower are very comfortably pushing this lane forward. Of course, level 2 coming through for Kaiser will make him a bit more of a threat onto the vein, but with Condemn, an available counterplay option, it is going to be difficult as Humanoid, well, showing us kind of what we expected from this lane early on. <laughs> Bolu going to need some jungle support if he wants to push this one out or praying for an empty man of art from Cassio as Romy will get a solid trade as both top winners trading grass procs back and forth for the most part. It's what Balulu gives away for his jungler to succeed, especially in this matchup across from Humanoid. Again, he went for the hard push to give space to the Lilia. It didn't pay off this time around, and now he can be punished. And after Shadow's done with this crab, there is going to be an opportunity to look for a gank. So Balulu very cleverly playing towards the bot side of his lane. You can see he's hovering towards the bot side river where Kakao is now stealing away Krugs, trying to deny any opportunity that Shadow would have on a potential gank here as it looks like Humanoid has actually frozen the wave in front of his tower. Yeah, but for right now for Mad Lions, the only place that they really have pressure as bot lane resets is the top side of the matchup where Orome using, uh, you know, Warren's naturally obnoxious kid, especially in the Scion matchup, to push in, to push for a bit more as he buys that early health crystal. So this is big. Shadow was actually uh, about to take his back, but the Raptor camp has been spawned. Again, it was the first camp that Kakao cleared. So we got the uh, timer and early reset onto it. And now he could even hold head up to the Krugs. Yeah, he uses the Spire's Bloom. He sees that the Krugs is still up. He assumes, actually, that Kakao is either on Bot Crab or resetting for Krug camp. You Watch see that he actually ping. pings it out. Level 5 for Humanoid. Oh, flashing forward. Can just trade flashes here. This is going to be big, though. Cassio yeah. needs that flash much more. Thank you so much, Dracos. Yeah, it, it is actually really weird. Not, not only because the gank pressure is there and the gank set up for a set, but also for Cassio to be really effective in mid lane matchups, she needs to have the flash because she plays really aggressive. She has a relatively short range with the twin fangs, and she wants to be constantly chasing you down. And without the safety of the flash, it actually takes away a lot of her offensive power and a lot of their matchups. So that should actually alleviate so much pressure from Balulu, even though it means that there's no more gank set up for Kakao. But frankly, he's not here to gank. You know what I mean? Like, you burn the flash to give your uh, mid laner a break, but otherwise we are back into uh, vacuum mode. Vacuum mode certainly looked good for Kakao last time. He got to vacuum up a few champions as well. He will be a camp behind at this stage. Trade is Scuttle Krasvid, as mentioned before, with three buff start for Shadow. Doing him some favors. 
Delaying the second blue spawn, though, will be a little bit awkward for Humanoid in the mid lane. As we do see the TP utilized top side only with very little mana, means that Armut is going to have a hard time, or rather, will have a hard time stopping this from being frozen, but Armut stops to clear it instead. Actually, one of the opportunities that Arome has here is he doesn't have to use his TP. He can actually get a reset walk back into lane, although Armut, you can see walking forward into yep. the lane, is trying to A, delay the back, but then B, also burn the wave in front of him as quickly as possible to force the teleport. Armut, very good job, actually denies the back from Arome, but does now expose himself to a potential gank. Yeah, Shadow moving up. Of course, relatively low mana for Arome. Level 6, though, now coming in. The setup is there. Scion, no level 6 of his own. Sidestepping is going to find the knockup now against the wall as well, but will not get knocked up. Bit of a fumble there from Mad Lions, and Ormut just walks away unscathed. No, this is a massive fumble from Mad Lions. You don't have kill pressure there. And look at what's happening on the bot side of your map. Kakao is on the Krug camp. The red is about to spawn. He just has Vision of Shadow and has all of this information and know exactly where he will be for kind of the next rotation. And now pitches out Karzy. Oh, flash over the wall. Karzy going to be in trouble. Kaiser trying to disengage. They are going to connect with the Zenith Blade, though. Karzy getting lower and lower, but they're not going to be able to push for too much more. But still, we already see Ezreal and Alistair trapped under their towers. Supermassive have a choice here. They can start the Ocean Drake, and it looks like they will. Shadow trying to really brute force on these ganks has going to cost his team the first dragon, as well as uh, some Karzy's health bar. We'll see if they try to contest this one. Shadow is now down here. You can see that there is push priority from bot side. He places a ward in the back of the pit, but... Supermassive playing this one slow, though. Don't want to risk a 50-50. Lost one of those to Shadow already. So his bot lane, Kaiser and Karzy, managed to save the day and cover for Shadow, exposing himself up into the top side, Delay uh, delaying the dragon. It's still a tempo advantage, however, for Kakao here. Still, though, checking in on mid lane. Humor has a decent advantage for himself. Bot lane relatively even in CS. Top lane even as well. The big difference, of course, um, Armut and Scion, obviously a lot stronger wave clear with the Decimating Smash as a few more items come under his belt, but Orn, one of the best, actually the best, hands down, scaling tank in the game, the ability to upgrade ally items. And Cassio, of course, not wasting time going boots, is going to be even faster to summon that itemization. She doesn't have flash. She may be caught out here, but Armut needs to get around the corner to open up the ultimate. Humanoid, that was actually really scary. Lilia, uh, he did have a ward onto the Raptor camp, so it has now disappeared now, but he did see that Kakao was kind of in the jungle. But, you know, that's a that's a few seconds away from not being a good time for the Cassiopeia without that flash to walk into topside river and deny crab. Absolutely is. And Zainai now taking over to level 6 is going to be big as well. You mentioned at the final hour, essentially. Not quite a free BF sword. It's taken a few hits over the years, but a little bit more than a free pickaxe these days, which means Vayne very difficult to all in when she's gotten that level 6. Snowflower as well, well on his way. Shadow. Now looking to take the Herald, and for now it appears that he is uncontested. Cal low on health and low on mana, so can't really do anything about this one. And Mad Lion's going to find themselves a small victory here in a relatively even game. Now, Snowflower and Zaitnot are walking down mid lane. You can see that Balulu is taking the reset, but he does have teleport. Shadow, like you said, should be able to get this one uncontested. And I was curious if Snowflower was actually going to show himself. Okay, nope. Snowflower and Zaitnot will not show themselves. Mad Lions can make an assumption that they were walking towards Herald, but it's not like the bot lane of Supermassive loses anything. The wave was held by Karzy as Kaiser was unlocked to support his jungler on Herald, and everyone should now return to standard map assignments. Yep, Karzy sitting comfortably for now. Cannot re reliably win the all in here. Has to land a lot of Qs on a champion that is very, very mobile, very, very scrappy, hard to get your hands on. And we can talk about the uh, Vayne while we have a little bit of a moment here, um, as people will just continue to farm up as we prep for Dragon. Uh, obviously, itemizing into the attack speed, the Reaver's Rush first, as well as the Lifesteal. You just talked about it, Dracos. Kind of gets free AD from that ultimate win in final, final hour. No longer the BF Sword about the pickaxe you were talking about, but that does mean that you kind of get the bang for your buck itemizing into attack speed and getting the free AD when you are in ultimate form makes it feel really healthy for early skirmishes. And we should see that power translated into dragon control. Yeah, continuing to bully out here on the bottom side of the map. Karzy, of course, uh, Ezreal's itemization feels really strong before that first back, but when you back first and you got to spend 800 gold on a tier, you are left wanting. The ulti will go just a bit wide. Honestly, a little bit closer. Maybe could have contested something, but Kakao will secure the smite and just continues to farm up. Relatively even jungle matchup. Mid lane continuing to pull ahead. Sets itemization, or rather Arome's position looks like the cheeky proxy here. But <laughs> this is a bit too cheeky because Set and Lilia are both on the way up. Okay, now Arome can be punished here as he's about to go 1v3. 
but look at Humanoid in the mid lane. You're going to trade potentially Arome's life here for massive plates on the Cassiopeia. Yes. Looks like definitely Arome's light, life, and Bolulu has bailed out of the play, so how many plates is he really going to sacrifice? Because that's first blood for Kakao, again, starting him rolling. Bolulu not in real position to stop this one. Can just ult and pull back there. Gets a clean pull back as the ult now comes in. He's going to be in trouble. The chain CC is flawless, and Mad Lions will get themselves a better advantage at the end. Very close play overall, however. And you can see it reflected in the gold. I'm going to say slightly worth for Mad Lions. Yeah, you gave away the first blood. Yeah, it was to Kakao. That one's not going to feel great, but it's on a low uh, eco on top laner, and now Mad Lions get the mid lane play as well as the Herald into Cassiopeia's bat pocket, and almost even looking at a potential dive, although everyone wants to take the reset, so just covering, kind of sniffed around for the dive on Vayne, decide against it. I'm not quite sure what to make of that one, but I will say this, and that's that uh, while Bo Lulu is doing fine in this lane magic, but obviously he's going to lose some CS, the early uh, Sunfire cape here is questionable. I get the wave clear. But also, at a certain point, Cassio will DPS check you, and I'm hoping that if he wants to finish this Sunfire Cape, that we see an adaptive helm shortly after, which just means you never really have to care about that change. He's definitely, there's no way he finishes the Sunfire, Tr surely. But the thing is, is people have been talking about this, every time we see a set mid so far in plans, they build like Dead Man Sunfire, no matter what their lane matchup is. And maybe that's just a testament to Set's tankiness, and he's more worried about things like the Ezreal and the Graves, but... The lane phase isn't getting any easier when you're itemizing full armor. I mean, he's not here to lane, you know what I mean? That's The Dead Man Sunfire is all about the push and the roam. He is the secondary jungler. He has a Lily. Yes. Your jungler's not, not ganking. He is the jungler. That's a null magic mantle, and that's that's all I needed to see to restore a little bit of faith there, Frosco. Little bit of MR early on. Maybe it's a Spirit Visage. I love Adaptive Helm, but understand if you want that CDR instead. So. Keep our eyes on that moving forward. Kakao, however, again, here on the bottom side of the map, flashback to previous games where him being here early, him being here ahead of schedule, reading the play from the Mad Lions has resulted in so much for Supermassive. Check the teleports, though. Humanoid has TP advantage over Balulu, but Ormut has uh, TP advantage over Arome as we look for the fight. Fishing cannot find the Q onto Ezreal, so cannot put them to sleep, and there will not be a follow-up engage. Kakao spending a lot of time there. Ultimately won't cost him too much, but not quite the success that he found in previous games. Rome unstoppable, will not connect on the knockup. Is Scion mostly focused on clearing out the wave here, one-shotting it with the decimating smash. It actually has cost Kakao his a lead that he had over Graves. Oh no. Ah, oh, it feels good for Scion. Thanks for the leash, buddy. Uh, special request production. If we're getting another Mercedes play, please let it be a Scion ult. That would feel succinct branding. That's all I'm going to say. Sunflower now going in, though, hoping to find a play onto Humanoid. The ulti comes out as the knockback goes in two, and oh, Snowflower not ready for the sheer amount of damage that would come out. Kakao going to use the ultimate. Will not find any follow-up. Has to be careful when the cooldowns are back up for Kaiser. He may find himself in trouble. Shadow now stepping forward. Good damage, but Kakao will prance his way out of that one. Oh, Kakao. That is, that is a dangerous thing to try. You do not... You do not get to be there, buddy. Oh. I mean, he's fast. He's just trying to, like, steal it away. The great heist over the Rapture camp. As Arma now finds himself between a rock and a hard place. Can he flash over the wall? Knock up there. Shadow debating where are they going to go. He can flash over the wall with his blast cone there as well. Kakao just kind of watching this happen. Unstoppable now from the ult. So many flashes burned. They absolutely want this kill. But who are they going to give it to? Looks Humanoid. Like Shadow. Is Human he going to get out? Shadow. Humanoid. Arma. No. Knock up. Turn from Snowflower. There's no flash, right? Yeah, so he's done. That's going to do it. That took about 45 seconds. Good news is this time, this game they have magic damage, Frostburn. And a Casio who offers sustained magic damage. So a little bit harder for Scion to just uh, tank literally everything. And it's that Casio is the beneficiary of the kill. 2, 0, and 1 right now on Humanoid. Uh, a champion like Casio certainly can scale hard enough to be the hard carry force they need, but not necessarily the roaming one. Ooh, big damage coming from Zynot, though. And this is the thing that they have to be worried about, is that Vayne, in skirmishes, is a monster. Team fights are a little bit hard when there's too much CC rolling around, but eventually when Zynot's won two items, 
who actually side lanes against this guy? Is it Humanoid? And if then, who deals with Bolulu? Because it's it's going to be a tough game, I feel like, for, for Supermassive to actually, or for rather for Mad Lions to survive if Vayne just gets, keeps getting to free for him. It's a really good point, Dracos. We will keep our eyes on the lane assignments as we break out of kind of the lane phase here. But so far, still all of the towers currently standing as we're fighting over Dragon. And here comes the TP. TP coming in. Both sums up for Zaytnot. He's going to be a tough one to lock down Kakao as well, holding onto the Chilling Smite, just laying down a little bit of poke. Big thing is, is that Armut does not have his ultimate yet. He's on the top side of the lane, but he cannot Scion train pain in here yet. Yeah. Additionally important to remember that Kaiser's ult makes him tanky. He gets a lot of champions, but Bane certainly isn't one of them. That's the sleep in onto Humanoid. They're trying to follow up. They're trying to land every little bit of CC, and Humanoid's now going to be trouble. No chance to lay down the ult. It's flawless from the side of Supermassive, and now they're chasing home. Kaiser's ult means nothing to this Bane. One, two, three, going to finish the job. Silver Bolt's finding their targets, and Supermassive take the skirmish. Supermassive decimate Mad Lions right there. It's now going to be a two dragon stack. The next one going to be in about 20, what, 21 minutes probably is when they'll next take it, which can be a really early uh, elder being unlocked for them. Now, look at what's happening cross map. Yes. So Supermassive win the fight. They then turn it on to the dragon. Arma immediately starts walking towards the Herald, obviously going towards the top lane, but catches out Shadow, trying to take the handshake for the Rift Herald and denies it. That means that Supermassive will get a clean reset and might be able to get both the dragon as well as the Rift Herald. The two for one special as Mad Lions are losing control of this early game. And you can see Zaytnok, the second you start to win a fight as a Vayne, no one gets away. It's just that simple. Karzi building for bits and pieces, hoping to get that Iceborne, hoping to slow down some of his pursuers and the fights to come. And now, the good news, if you're a Mad Lions fan, is this. Humanoid is strong. If Supermassive want to keep winning fights, they need to execute exactly like that, where they delete him before the fight even gets started. Bad news is, as they start to get further and further ahead, it does get easier and easier to pull off. <laughs> does mean that Humanoid is already positioned and picking up waves on top side, has priority there, so he can be the first one to move down for this Herald, as we talked about it being the big objective. And check out where Zeitnot's positioning is. He's got the completed Bork as well as a pickaxe in his back pocket, oh. but he's walking bottom. Uh, this should mean that as soon as they see Zeitnot appear on this wave bot side, that that will give the go-ahead for Mad Lions to pull the trigger on the Herald, and there we go. Pretty late Herald as well. It's going to happen until about 21 minutes, so can do a little bit of work with it. Potentially could try to get it to uh, force a decision out of Supermassive about what they want to keep alive. It does mean, though, that they're probably just going to trade tower for tower here. Like, you pick up Herald, maybe use it mid lane to push that one down, as well as top tower going down. But you can see Zeitnot and Snowflower, like, they'll trade Herald, especially when it's not giving plate gold, uh, to pick up more solo EXP and gold for the vein. Wow. And getting, it looks like uh, potentially Gintu's second is usually the path that we see with this build, trying to maximize those on-hit damage effects. Makes her incredible at shredding tanks. A little bit less upfront damage for some of the other members. But that would be, it's that or IE. So I think it's a pretty safe bet on the Gintus. Oh, Mad Lines are so far behind the play. We're only going to try to cheat some tempo back by deleting this wave. But sadly, it might cost him his life as he's now burned his unstoppable. We'll dash out to safety. Mad Lions are running here because they want to try to see if they can pick up Supermassive, but with Arome having used the ultimate, there's no chase uh, pressure here. Shadow needs to walk mid and place down Herald. Dragon's going to be spawning in 230, so it would only be to take down the mid lane tower. But at least Humanoid, I guess, has a wave that he can potentially farm and push all the way back. He should get three waves before he hits that uh, bot lane tower. Oof. But this is what I mean by being behind the play. Super massive, you know, they've already got the swap first. They now trade both bot lane tower for top lane tower, and now top lane tower for Herald bot side, not mid. So Mad Lion's still about 20, 30 seconds behind these structural trades across map. And one of the big things is if you ever leave Scion uncontested, he'll just alt that tower and do basically what this Rift Herald does here, which is essentially one-shot it. Now, Humanoid is, of course, going to continue to get more and more solo gold. Matt have clearly identified the man that they want to carry. And after five bans, it's a damn good thing to see that he can still put up a solid performance. But still, Mad Lion's on the back foot. It's not a massive gold difference. The bigger issue is the Dragon slowly stacking in the favor of Super Massive. Bolulu going to feel fine in this, comf or in this matchup now as the Adaptive Helm is finished, even if he is a maybe a bit weaker against the other AD sources of the Mad Lions. He's literally just a speed bump to Cassiopeia. Now, one of the big things, though, is that while the Herald does kind of just even out towers across map for both teams, Humanoid has been picking up so much experience. He's currently the highest level in the game, tied with Arma on the Scion. And 
like you said, this does feel like a 1v9 humanoid type of situation. On the other side, super massive, very powerful for their itemizations. Um, Zeitnot went for the pickaxe, he now has the recurve bow, so like you said, going for the rage blade doesn't have the Book of Worthlessness yet in that build path, but if they can funnel in gold, get a good reset for Zeitnot so he can get his rage blade and then show up for this dragon fight, you know, that Elder Soul dragon stack is looking really good for super massive and how powerful Vayne is. And the other big thing is, is that normally Vayne stacking Gensu's at the start of a fight is always a bit of a pain, but if you're the one at this point, up to Drake point, if you're the one who gets the vision down first, you auto that Drake four or five times, you're primed and ready to go, and the second Gensu's is online, it's just so much damage. And Arome, Kaiser, it doesn't matter what tanky stats you build, she's you know, she's going to kill you in six autos, and six autos is going to happen very quickly with double attack speed items. It's kind of the question if Supermassive can stall it long enough to get Zeitnot to the item. I can't ping over to his gold, so I can't see how close or how far away he is, but the teams are starting to gear up for this uh, Drake spawning in 14 seconds. Mid lane priority, two Mad Lions, Humanoid, of course, with the blue buff, and they will get first access, but look at Balulu. It's He's sleeping. underneath them. Two members locked up, but already we have a he can get Cassio Pia. coming out. Balulu trying to he find something. He's going to be dunking back. Now Cassio kicked off in the middle of five. That's going to be a three man ultimate, and immediately the fall for more three man. Knock up humanoid burning ticking, but he's got the conqueror proc and he's trying to run him down. Eyes on Zeitnot though, they're gonna find one. Kakao getting a kill. Humanoid trying his little heart out, but it is simply not enough. But Karzi will grab another kill back. Not the only carry threat on this team. Karzi will strike back, but it is still super massive. Coming out on top, they will grab themselves the infernal. And Balulu just dunked on Mad Lions right there, Mad. They thought that they had done the entire checklist. Have mid lane priority. We can now walk safely into the dragon, but they didn't check behind them. They had a single shallow control ward right on top of the red buff, so they do not see the set until it is too late. He snags Humanoid, and while Humanoid delays it with a nice ultimate, immediately deletes the snake. And it's brutal, because you can see how difficult these fights are. Because yes, the second that Cassio cannot deal consistent sustained damage, you've got to worry about Kakao. You've got to worry about Zeitnot. Bolulu generating so much space for both of these champions to do exactly what they need to do. And as we look back at this one, it's the flank that you talked about from the side here. The set coming in, the one you have to watch. As Humanoid is dunked down, a solid all, a solid orn follow-up. But the members are just simply too tanky. They don't hit Zeitnot, they don't hit Kakao. And that means that both those alts ultimately not what the team needed, even if Karzi gets a flashy kill back. And that adaptive helm just doing work for Balulu. The fact that he eats the Cassiopeia ultimate multiple iterations of the Twin Fang and still is able to walk out of the fight with his W and then didn't even have to TP back in. He still got to save the cooldown. To be fair to Vayne, the only reason Karzi hits that Q, I'm reasonably certain, we'd have to run it back in a, in a theoretical example, is because he accidentally autos the Scryer's Bloom and stuns himself for a tenth of a second so it will connect. So that could have been even worse, but it does mean that Karzi now has, you know, the fist, and he's got the fully stacked Muramana as well, so he can start to poke from range, hoping to stop Zeitnot from finding a way forward. A click strikes again. They do. Oof. Zeitnot, though, taking a decent chunk there. Still have to respect the Ezreal. Obviously, in sustained damage, Vayne's going to be unmatched, but in the burst, Ezreal can still pack a punch. Now, this is uh, one of the issues, though, is that now Supermassive need to figure out how they want to break towers because they are still dealing with a relatively short-range ADC like a Vayne, not uh, something long-range that can step back and chip it away. So you see that Mad Lions can slow down when Supermassive just A-Ram stack mid and try to force the tower. And meanwhile, you know, then that allows Humanoid so much time to continue to pick up waves and experience in a side lane. And the lane assignments can't really punish him unless they bring multiple members to deal with it. Like, Balulu theoretically shouldn't die in that matchup, but he certainly can't stop Humanoid. And there's a few things that are going to be very difficult for them. It's just that one, Zynod is just continuing to get stronger and stronger, right? Kakao is also terrifying. He can constantly fish with these swirl seeds. The other big issue, Orn almost level 14. He can start to look to upgrade his allies' items. Right now, he's got an Iceborne Gauntlet. He can upgrade a Cleaver. Those are it. That's your options. Those <laughs> items suck. I was, I was waiting for it. I was like, like Obsidian Cleaver is solid, right? It's, it's Maybe it's not your ideal choice, but it's, it's solid. But the Iceborne Gauntlet, it's okay for Ezreal because the extra mana means extra damage on the Muramana, but like, come on, you want that Blade of the Rune King, maybe? You're looking for that Death Cap. And from the way Humanoid is building, he knows he needs Magic Pen, which means he is not getting an upgrade in the next 10 minutes. It's not the most value of ornaments that I've ever seen, but you take those, I guess. Yeah. Again, reading map state, um, we're going to keep rolling Swirl Seeds down this mid lane, fishing for what you got, but super massive. Because there's no monster objective to play through, it would be too risky to go for the Baron. Oh. They can play for the Infernal Soul in two minutes. They just want a five-man stack in this mid lane, try to find Matt out of position like Shadow, and break mid lane tower. Knock back. Interesting trade, though. Ultimately, just spending Scion all not getting a lot there. 
flashes right around the corner for Karzi, Arome, and Humanoid. With all those flashes up and available, much harder for a player like Bolulu to find a flank, especially when he, well, right about the same time, will have his flash, own flashback. And while that's super massive strategy, the strategy for Mad Lions has been to stall out. And they've done so very successfully in two different attempts to knock down mid-tower, and again, getting more space and time for Humanoid. Still level 15, still matched with Armada as the highest level into the game, now passed over to the blue buff. Like, Mad Lions are gearing up for this infernal fight, but they need to do their due diligence, get down deeper wards behind them, and keep Humanoid safe, fight slowly front to back through the beef line of Supermassive. And this is where you start to remind yourself that this team is very young. Yes, Humanoid has experience on the world stage, but he's the only one on the opposite side. We've got Cacao. We've got Snowflower. Hell, Zeitnot has a ton of his own. So these guys are veterans, and when it comes down to these high-pressure, high-stakes moments in what could be the final game for Mad Lions, Supermassive have been the team that are staying confident, staying calm, staying controlled, and that's why they are at match point. And always punishing Mad Lions in the vision game. The control wards have just gone down. I want to point out the two control wards underneath the Dragon Pit. The Lulu actually pl pressed one down as we race back into mid lane, but there are options to get uh, someone underneath Arma is resetting his position. He does have teleport. He could TP to one of these wards. Instead, going to go ahead and walk with his team is Mad Lions. They've sent down a Rome to check out underneath and behind everything. He found maybe one of the control wards. Yeah, it's been spotted out. And they're just trying to really clear everything out and set this one up perfectly because this Infernal Soul might mean the end of their 2020 season. It might, especially with Bo Lulu on the flank now, hovering down towards the bottom side. They'll see him. Doesn't mean they can remove him too easily. Karzi has to be careful. He's, He's gotten caught isolated. out. They could kill him. But they can't overcommit because then his team just takes the dragon in response or even rushes towards Baron. The thing is, he also has dead mans. So the further down they go, the more easy it is for them to just walk back up to mid, take mid prial, look at the Baron, potentially threaten. Now, you don't want to be caught in a pit against an Orn and an Ezreal, but... And now you're just making the very rookie team that you were talking about, Dracos, uh, make really hard decisions. Are they going to fight for the mid priority? Or are they going to try to chase down uh, Balulu? Are they going to try to fight the team? And this is when Mad Lions have been caught out, and the TCL Supermassive have been able to out skirmish them. Supermassive now have their priority on the pit, possibly looking for the fight here. Amat does have ultimate as well as flash. And you can see Zainai stacking it up. This is the Ginsu stack. Has to keep it just going, but can also just shred through this objective. They don't want to risk a 50-50, but maybe they risk it anyway. Armut now Lilia. stepping forward, trying to find Humanoid on the backside, but he can't quite do it. The lockup is there. The Orn now trying to find it down, but that's a suplex, and it is not on Humanoid. Humanoid trying to shred through, but Armut just a little bit too tanky. The stun goes in. Karzi manages to take down Zeit. Now Karzi, playing like a man possessed, gets everything he needs in that fight. That is the double kill, and now Humanoid is out for vengeance. He's out of blood. He says, you got five bands, might not be enough. Six is what you're going to need as Humanoid pushes back the remaining members of Supermassive as Mad Lion Lions hold on for now, taking away the Infernal Dream. A very tense situation for the Mad Lions, but they hold strong, they make the correct choice. Humanoid gets the reset, he TPs back to the mid lane tower, and they manage to play the fight slow, front to back. Karzi finding the assassination on Zeitnot means that Mad Lions have denied the soul and now have position on Baron. Death timers, they don't have enough. Bolulu too far away, the TPs aren't going to be there. Mad Lions take away the Infernal, they deny the soul for at least five more minutes, they grab a Baron for themselves. Fights are still going to be difficult, but the advantage is now in their favor. They could take it to game five. Now that said, while that was a huge swing of confidence back in favor for Mad Lions, they still are not afforded any more mistakes here because they're still looking down the barrel of a potential soul point. An excellent team fight here. Great job from Arome on opening up the Orn ultimate, as well as finding Vayne with the knock up there to allow Karzi to just line him up and shoot him down. You can see all of Mad Lions popping off in that moment, knowing that messing that play up would have probably been the end of their world's run. And that little blue line is EU's hope. Is the glimmer of hope for EU and for the Mad Lions. That is the pulse. <laughs> Will they be the first team eliminated from EU in play-ins? Will the TCL finally beat a major region team on their path to the group stage? That's something we're going to have to keep our eyes on. A look at Balulu here. The observers have done a good job showing that this is a very deep reach round. But Armut could lead the charge. Balulu is pulling the trigger right now. Mad Lions should have spotted him out. That's why Shadow is kind of hiding under trying to find the set. We are seconds away from Supermassive pulling the trigger. Here they go. They have to try to stop Bolulu, but he's so fast. He's, oh, they blinded him. The smoke screen was perfect, and now he's caught out and knocked down. The re-engage now coming in. Mad Lions smell blood in the water. They're ready to get this going. Supermassive 
burning a lot there. Bolulu getting taken down means priority access to the mid lane. Looks like top lane will fall as well. Will it just be tier twos or can Mad Lions break open the base of Supermassive? No more hero play for Bolulu that time around in the engagement. Just absolutely stuffed as he walks up to the back of Mad Lions, gets slapped in the face with Cassiopeia ultimate. Big Baron power play, two towers that you were just talking about, multiple waves starting to open this gold lead back up for Mad. And again, most importantly, those big core itemizations on Cassio. When she backs, she's going to be massive. Will be big. Oh, the slow siege coming in. Karzi playing very far forward, but no, he has the luxury to do so. Range on this composition for Super Massive is quite low. If they get a good engage, obviously it's always going to look solid, but if they can't, Karzi can just stand at arm's length knowing that Humanoid's disengage potential alongside an Orn, alongside an Alistair, will be more than enough to stop their backline from being contested whatsoever. Arma just being pushed back. Sight not now stepping forward though, but suddenly Snowflower into the backline. Kakao trying to find an opportunity, but he can't quite get it done. In the meantime, Snowflower just getting shredded through. Arma next on the list and a fantastic ult coming in, but Bolulu, big haymaker on the backside. However, Vayne not gonna be enough. Cut down there and Mad Lions looking to end it here. They wanna take it straight to Silver Scrapes. They do not wanna give Supermassive any more chances for that Infernal Soul. It is calm, it is controlled, it is collected. They outrange and outthink Supermassive in the final moments of this game. Cow will get nothing done. That is the ace, and that will be the game. Mad Lions scraping their way back into this one after a few clean fights from Supermassive, and they will take us to a game five. Loser will be eliminated from one. Tomorrow, of course, whoever wins this has to play UOL as well, so the gauntlet does not stop here. But additionally, blue side has a 100% win rate. S4 for four for old blue side, and super massive get choice, and well, but don't, here's, don't think it's a big guess to say that they're going to go for blue side. This but here's around. the thing. Usually blue side empowers you to have specific target bans. On red side, they're like, screw that, and they threw the target bans anyway. So while I understand that that does still mean that you give up the blue side priority pick of the Orn, and maybe that's the big difference here, maybe that's the contested pick, but it doesn't change up the ban strategy again. They threw five bans. They're probably going to do it again. Absolutely can. I think the big difference will be that first pick, right? And if it means Orn. Orn's so incredibly important, it feels like, for Mad Lions. That's both games they've had Orn, they've won. Without it, they've lost. Now, that's a bit a bit correlation causation, but at the end of the day, this is going to be a tough one for Mad Lions. It's nearly time for Game 5, presented by Spotify. We all know Silver Scrapes is the official Game 5 track, but Spotify wants to know, what's your ultimate hype track for this matchup? Tweet your choice with hashtag League on Spotify. Mine is Foot Fungus by Ski Mask the Slump God. Absolute banger. For now, we're going back to a break, but when we return, it's Game 5 on the Analyst Desk. Let's see.